Hi, I'm Andrew, and welcome to Plant Life Project. Well, today let's go over the basic nitrogen cycle that occurs in our aquariums, how beneficial bacteria and plants work together to filter the water, and how uh, riparian plants in particular, like pothos and peace lily, many others, which grow above the water line, can be a vital component in your filter system to the extent that it is possible to keep a healthy fish tank without a mechanical filter at all, like this tank right behind me. And finally, we'll talk about the importance of a deep substrate in a tank like this and the role it plays in filtering the water over time. So the basic nitrogen cycle that occurs in all of our tanks is ammonia is introduced into the water from fish waste. There's a group of bacteria that feed on the ammonia and convert it into a less toxic form called nitrite. And you also have plants that are taking up ammonia as well. So then another group of bacteria feed on the nitrite and convert it into the least toxic form, which is nitrate. And from there, plants take up nitrates to use as fuel for growth. And then uh, plant leaves die or they're eaten by fish which produces waste, and then the cycle continues. So the beneficial bacteria, which make up the biological filter, and the plants work together to filter the water. The bacteria can only break down the waste so far, so we need the plants to take up that final product, which are the nitrates, from the water. If there are no plants in the tank, or too few of them, then the nitrates will build up, and you have to do water changes to remove those ex excess nitrates. So generally speaking, the more plants you have growing in your tank, the lower the need for water changes is gonna be. The primary role of water filters is to evenly distribute oxygen throughout the water to mechanically filter the debris, but also to provide a greater concentration of beneficial bacteria on the sponge or other filter media and where the water is then directed through and filtered by the bacteria. Now the reality is that beneficial bacteria colonize every surface in the tank, from the glass to the leaves of the plants, uh, the, the substrate especially, everything. Uh, the, the filter just provides a greater concentration and exploits the role of the bacteria in efficiently filtering that water, which is most important in tanks with higher uh, stocking levels, which are producing more waste and little to no plants. In a heavily planted tank, there can be less emphasis on providing an additional filter because the plants are taking up so much of the ammonia and of course the nitrates, and they're releasing oxygen into the water. This is especially true of riparian and emergent plants because with their leaves above the water, they have unlimited access to CO2 in the air. They have better access to the light, which means they're growing faster. They're taking up more nitrogen. For more information about this, check out the ecology of the planted tank. This is where the house plants come into play. Growing pothos and peace lily and so many others as riparian plants goes a long way toward filtering the water to the point where you may not even need a man-made filter at all. And the overarching goal for my tanks is for the plants to be able to filter the water to the extent that water changes are greatly reduced or eliminated. And my secondary goal is for the tanks to eventually be able to operate without a man-made filter at all. And so far, I have varying degrees of success in this. I still use hob and sponge filters in many of my tanks but I'm always working toward that goal of the plants being the filter. So over time, I'm able to rely more and more on these plants. My 75 gallon tank has grown to the point where I have removed the hob filter completely and replaced it with more plants and a wave maker to circulate the water. I do regularly test the water to make sure all the levels are remaining stable. Well, this wave maker is an Aquanique brand from Amazon and it is surprisingly quiet with little vibration and it's decently priced too. It comes in a two pack and I'll be sure to put the link in the description below if you want to check it out. But this circulates the water, move, moving it around all the plant roots and the lava rocks which are in the planter baskets 
and these plants are actively growing, pulling the nitrogen from the water, and this is the goal that I have been working toward for this tank and for the others as well. So this really feels like a point of arrival in a sense, but it also proves my point that plants can be the primary water filter. Now, my main concern in not having an additional filter is that the water may get cloudy over time. So I may have to add a sponge filter from time to time uh, just to keep the water clear if that becomes an ongoing issue. The deep substrate plays a crucial role as part of the filter system as well. In the top layer, there are different aerobic bacteria and other organisms at work uh, breaking down the waste. But the further down that you go in the substrate, the less oxygen there is. And finally, at the bottom, there is very little to no free oxygen available. And in this layer, there are anaerobic bacteria uh, breaking down the waste further that has slowly worked its way down. And they're breaking it down uh, into available nutrients for the plants to use once again. I started out using just gravel and some EcoComplete as the substrate about a, you know over a year ago, I guess maybe close to two years now, and I could not grow any aquarium plants. Now, over time, I have added uh, dirt, soil, you know, clay, and some different soil fertilizers, and a, a sand layer on top of all of that to seal all of these organics and all these nutrients in the substrate. And now, most plants grow quite easily. As this tank grows and develops, it's becoming more of an ecosystem more self-sustaining and alive with these natural cycles that perpetuate life and the story continues. Be sure to check out the 75 gallon tank story playlist down in the description below to see how this system has progressed since I set it up. So that's the nitrogen cycle in a nutshell and the importance of plants, especially plants growing above the water level in filtering that water, reducing water changes. Well, be sure to check out all the links below in the description and leave a comment, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and remember, it's all about the plants.